win. All right, welcome, 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 everyone. And those of you that are viewing by Zoom, again, we appreciate you taking the time out. Uh, once you get comfortable, but not too comfortable, we we'll don't want anybody passing out in the middle of all this good stuff, all right? So um, get your Bibles ready. We're going to be picking up in, in uh, Ephesians chapter 5. So again, we welcome you. Thank you for being on. Again, I have, you know, if you can and want to, uh, go ahead and, and uh, text some of your friends, some of your enemies, some of your neighbors, some of your co-workers, whoever you can get and invite them to, uh, you know, log into the Zoom as well, okay? All right, we want to try to get as many people exposed to this as possible. And then for those of you who are here, again, thank you for pressing your way out and making the sacrifices that you needed to make to be here. Uh, I thoroughly appreciate it. Even if you weren't here, I would have to be here by myself, amen, but anyhow, <laughs> glad you're here. So we're going to go ahead and pray and get started. Our time seems to fly on, on Wednesday nights, and uh, before we know it, it's time to close out. So let's uh, hurry up and jump into this and, and get started. All right, you bow your hearts with me. Father in heaven, we thank you for your grace and your mercy. We thank you for divine provision. Lord, we, um, you, you've given to us all that we need uh, to live God. And so, Lord, when we choose not to, it's our choice. We're choosing it, Lord. You've given us the ability. You've made that available to each and every one of us. And I pray, God, that you continue to grow us in our understanding and in our apprehension of these truths, Lord, that are designed to transform our lives. God, to give us kingdom thinking so that we begin to behave and act like kingdom people so that we're not influenced and pulled away by the allurements of the world, oh God, no matter how enticing it may be. Thank you for the strength, the stability, oh God, the staidness of your word and what it does for each one of us as we take hold of it. Thank you for these that are present. Thank you for those that are watching by Zoom. And Father, I pray that your presence be as strong there as it is here. And Lord, we just invite you, Holy Spirit, you are the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. We cannot know him apart from you. So open our hearts, open our minds, open our spirit to hear, to receive, to embrace the truth of your word. Thank you for this wonderful, excellent uh, 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 revelation called the book of Ephesians, this letter that you gave to the apostle Paul to give to the church at Ephesus and to every believer for all time to get a hold of this and be transformed by it. Thank you for it now. We bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> all right. Uh, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Come on in. Have a seat. Amen. Good to see you. All right. I uh, want to pick up at verse, uh, chapter five, verse, um, uh, let's see, verse, verse 17, 17, 17, verse 17, chapter five, pull out your Bibles, your notebooks, pens, pencils, whatever you need to write with or record with. It says, therefore, do not be unwise. Do not be unwise, but do what? Understand. Understand what the will of the Lord is. And so again, it is very possible um, for each and every one of us to be able to understand what the will of the Lord is. Uh, and yet so many believers never find out what the will of the Lord is. Number one, because they don't make themselves available to the venues that um, can help them discover that. Meaning Bible study, uh, you know, church attendance, uh, you know, small groups, whatever it is, personal studies, there, there, there's, there's great neglect on the part of many, many uh, believers. And those of you who know different ones, if you know that they're negligent in their Bible study, do everything you can to encourage them to get into the word. There's no substitute for the word of God, all right? So uh, do what you can. So I just want to walk you through a couple of things here to help us understand how to understand the will of God, all right? So take out your pens real quick. We'll try to go through this 
pretty quick so we can get moving in the rest of chapter five. You ready? All right, all right. How can I know the will of God? Uh, first of all and foremost is be familiar with the Bible. Uh, read through the Bible uh, so you can have some awareness of at least what's in there. You may not know the details, but at least you'll have some awareness of this. So a familiarity with the Bible, the word of God, uh, because in it is contained the will of God. All right. Uh, the second thing is um, um, we can know the will of God by uh, whether there's peace in our heart or whether there's anxiety in our heart. That's not the most accurate way, but it is one of the ways. It's when uh, you're about to make a decision, you've prayed about it, you, you've gotten a sense of, you think that this is the right decision, and then accompanied with that decision is the peace of God in your heart. Okay, that's not the most accurate and most consistent, but it is what it's one of the ways that you can know the will of God. It is the peace of God that is guarding your heart. All right. The next one is godly counselors. Godly counselors. Now, <laughs> how do you determine who a godly counselor is? I don't want to take all night on that at all, but um, if, you don't, if you're not able to recognize who a godly counselor is, then you will, you know, uh, pull on whoever you pull on, and they're going to tell you whatever they tell you. And sometimes it's really unfortunate, but there are some Christians who get their counsel from from people who are not even saved, or they get it from secular um, media or social media and those kind of things. That might not be the most accurate, uh, especially as you compare it to what the word says. So you want to find somebody who loves God, who you see that's in church, somebody who's praying, somebody who attends Bible study, somebody who's, you know, really living this life. Uh, then you kind of, you know, go up to them and say, listen, I got a question. I wonder if you could help me with it. All right, you get that advice, and it's okay to get a second opinion. Hello? Hello? It's okay to get a second opinion. All right, you don't have to stop with that one person. Get two or three people um, and, and weigh through uh, the different things that are said, and then you make the final decision. But godly counselors help guide you. If a, if a, if a person, you know, is so, so supposedly counseling you, and they're not using the word of God, uh, I, I would be very suspect, okay? Uh, I, I would, you know, you can hear it, but but you want you want somebody that's going to tell you what God says about whatever your question has to do with. Everybody got that? All right, so godly counsel. Okay, um, what about through circumstances? Through circumstances, we can learn uh, what the will of God is. And uh, sometimes we learn through negative circumstances not to do that again. So that must not be the will of God because that hurt. Right. You understand? <laughs> that, that hurt. Okay, so I, I, I probably shouldn't do that again. <laughs> Fortunately, that doesn't always work. That doesn't always work. <laughs> I agree because I got a whole bunch of whippers growing up. Whoopers, not whippers. Whoopers, they man, growing up. And it, it, it slowed me down, but it never stopped. Me. So, uh, so, but circumstances, uh, we can learn what the will of God is by reading the circumstance. I'm trying to remember this book. Um, uh, it was a workbook, uh, Knowing the Will of God. Uh, what's the author's name? Um, I can't think of it right now. I meant to uh, write that down so I could share that with you, but it's a it's a really good workbook. It's about maybe a quarter inch thick, uh, but it literally takes you through every angle of learning how to discover what God's will is. It's knowing the will of God, and I just can't think of the author's name. Okay, so if you get a hold of that workbook, go ahead; it'll be worth your time. And Okay, so godly counselors through circumstances, and then uh, the voice of the Holy Spirit is another way. Uh, as we commune with him, as we develop our prayer life, our ability to hear and understand the voice of the Holy Spirit, 
uh, we'll get direction from there. We'll, we'll be led and guided uh, and instructed concerning what God's will is. All right. So again, the voice of the Holy Spirit is another. And then through visions and dreams uh, is another way to discover that. Uh, God can show your dream. Every dream you have is not from God, okay? <laughs> not inspired of God, but some of them could be. And, um, and, you know, seek out godly counselors that may be able to help you with understanding um, the meaning of those dreams and or visions that God still speaks to people today in visions and dreams. Um, another way is through the gifts of the spirit, uh, in particular, word of wisdom, um, prophecy, or two in ways in particular that you can know uh, uh, God's will for your life. All right. <laughs> All right. So um, the more we surrender to God, the more we commune with the Holy Spirit in prayer and in, in worshiping God and studying the word, um, the more and more uh, we will understand God's will uh, more clearly. Uh, how do we even understand God? How do we know what he's like? Okay. We get that from reading the word. It'll, it'll say different things about who he is, and that's how we know who he is and how he is, all right? So if you really want to know, it's no great big secret, but again, we have to put forth the effort to, um, uh, to make those discoveries, all right? Any questions about that? No, nope. everybody good? Okay, so you already knew all that already. Okay, I'll just waste it with 15 minutes. Pastor, is it Blaine Smith? Not Blaine Smith, no. Um, if you say the name, it'll, it'll, I'll know who it is. But it's knowing the will of God. I think that's the title of it. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. So let's. That that was that. I just want to go back because I did say I was going to kind of run this by you this week. Um, you know how to discover God's will for your life. All right. Okay, then we move on to verse 18, and do not be drunk with wine, which is uh, dissipation. Dissipation means waste, okay, waste, waste of time, waste of energy, waste of resources, time, energy, resources, reputation, It, it refers to a life that is out of control. When somebody is drunk, they are out of control, All right? So that's what dissipation. So he's saying, don't be drunk with wine, which results in dissipation or waste on every level. He says, but be filled with the spirit. Mm. Be filled with the spirit. Um, some people believe that that happens the moment you accept Christ as your savior. We are born again of the spirit. He's the one who makes us alive. He comes to reside. The Father, Son, Holy Spirit comes to make their abode, their home inside of us. And uh, But being filled with the Holy Spirit is what Jesus talked about in Acts chapter one, where he says, you will, be, you will receive power after that the Holy Spirit has come upon you. Okay, so there is... There is this, this something extra that happens that is available for believers, and every believer should seek to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Uh, I got saved as a Baptist, and they didn't talk about this stuff, didn't teach it, didn't preach it, so I had no clue. I met my wife at the time, was going to a church that believed in that, and, uh, and so I'm on this journey trying to figure out how in the world I can get filled with the Holy Spirit, not understanding anything about it. And so I was on this crazy journey for, for several years. Uh, I had some, some you know, big time people lay hands on me and pray and cast 59 devils out of me and pray for everything else. And you know, to try to get filled with Holy Spirit. I went through everything. I went to a couple of camp meetings. I did everything. And I started feeling like I was a second class citizen in the kingdom, all right? And so I just said, well, if, if you know, I have been through all of this. If God wants to fill me, he'll fill me. That was what I settled on, all right? And so I went to another meeting one afternoon. Um, 
they pulled me in the back room and tried to teach me how to speak in tongues. I did have enough sense to know that that's not the way that it was supposed to happen. So I left there frustrated again. I went home. I was there by myself. It was the early stages of my marriage. My wife was at work. And I was sitting in the living room, and I was mad at the world, mad at God, mad at Christians, mad at churches, because nobody could help me receive this gift. And so I'm, I'm getting ready to fuss, and I'm praying, Lord, if I understood what to do, if I knew what to do, I would do it. Just boop, just, just so I'm fussing and going. All of a sudden, it's like God took my mouth and put it over here and started talking back to me in tongues. I said, "Well, I like it." <laughs> <laughs> and so some drastic changes begin to happen inside me. Okay, uh, just um, it, it changed everything. So uh, I have to credit my wife for uh, uh, pushing on me uh, to do that because the church that she was belonging to said I wasn't going to heaven because I wasn't speaking in tongues. Oh, so that was another weight that was on me, right? So it was crazy journey, crazy journey. But I'm telling you, once it happens, then you realize just how easy it is, how simple it is to receive. But if you try to try to deal with it from your intellect, you, you're going to be bumping up against a stone wall every single time. Okay, It's a gift that God wants to give to every one of his children. Every one of them. Right? Doesn't matter what denomination you are. But he wants to give that gift. But it's the gift and you just simply, you, you believe to receive it. It's just, it really is that simple. I mean, if it hasn't happened to you, then you think, I don't know, that don't work because I tried that. But it, it's, it's that simple. And I remember praying for a person one time to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And we was in there working, right? About, about two minutes, three minutes, nothing wasn't happening. And then all of a sudden, I opened up my eyes and I'm looking at them. And the person, you could tell they was all up in the intellect. They was working that day, trying to figure it out. Oh, my God. So I said, everybody stop. And I looked at the person. I said, as long as you wrestle up here, it's not going to happen. What I want you to do is just relax right now. Don't think about nothing. Just think about you getting ready to receive. We prayed for 15 seconds and she was gone. <laughs> okay, so uh, it really is way more simple than we think it is. And it's, you don't have to, you ain't got to earn it. You, you ain't got to say a thousand thank you, Jesus. It's like the phone is coming out your mouth and all that crazy stuff. Okay, so it really is simple. And I want to encourage all who have not been filled to be filled. Jesus is the one who said you will receive power. Jesus said that. Not the apostles, not anybody. Jesus said that. So that must be pretty important. He was filled with the Holy Spirit. All right. So if he was filled and who he was, I mean, how much more should we be filled? All right. So anyhow, so it says here, be filled with the Spirit. Now the rest of this chapter is going to connect back to the, the fruit or the results of being filled with the Holy Spirit. Everything else that we're going to talk about in this chapter, everything. Y'all listening? Mm -hmm. I said everything. All right. Okay. Everything is going to tie right back into being filled with the Holy Spirit. The proof, the evidence, the fruit, all of that. All right. So here we go. So the first thing he says in verse 19 as a result of being filled with the Holy Spirit, what's the first thing we should be able to do with each other? Say what? Speak to, Speak to one another. Woo! That sounds simple to everybody, but you know how complicated that is? For, for Christians to speak to each other. Yeah. Huh? I, I don't know you, so I, I, I don't think I need to say anything to you. Oh, really? See, we, we're, we're failing to understand that each believer makes up the mystical body of Christ. And so for me to not speak to my member, the, the member in the body, see, is to disregard that member. And so if I'm filled with the Holy Spirit, it says right here that we should be able to do what? Speak to one another. We should be able to speak to one another if we feel with the Holy Spirit, all right? Then it goes on to say, um, speaking to each other in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, making melody in your heart to the Lord. 
Ain't that something? Mm -hmm. And so I describe, use this verse right here to describe what ought to be the atmosphere of every Christian home. Don't hang up on that. Mm -hmm. The atmosphere of every Christian home. It should be filled with psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Folks should be walking around the house making melody in their heart. Mm -hmm. That's what every Christian parent should be shooting for to describe the atmosphere of my home. How else are your children going to grow up to love God? They hear noise in the house, but it ain't no spiritual songs and hymns. It's some new stuff, <laughs> some different stuff they hear, right? All them saved parents get home and forget that they say when they get home and they get the same words that would be appropriate in the church house. But it's, 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 it's again, it, 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 it makes me think about this. If the Bible says my body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, it's where the Holy Spirit resides. It's here, not the building. The only reason why he's in the building at all is because we're here. Did y'all just hear what I said? Yeah. This is the temple. So how is it that I have more respect and reverence, if I have it, for this building than I have for this building? I wouldn't bring a cigarette in the church on Sunday morning. Why do I bring them here? I wouldn't bring some herbs in the church house on Sunday morning. Why would I bring them here? Hello? I wouldn't bring a 40 ounce, amen, hello, in the church house on Sunday. Why would I bring it here? You understand? Mm -hmm. But but if we don't get that perspective, then, then you know, some Christians think it's okay to do whatever you want to do, you know, as long as you ain't hurting nobody else. But, but again, whatever you're doing that you think is okay, I want to ask you a question. Can you offer Jesus to do the same thing? Invite him to do the same thing you're doing. Is that okay? Now, if your answer is no, then why are you doing it? That makes sense to anybody but me. Yeah, I, I should, I, if, if I'm okay with it, I should be able to offer it to Jesus, right? I should be able to invite him to join me if it's okay. If it's not okay, then why? Are we doing it? And so, again, uh, when we're young and strong and we think we can run through troops and jump over walls and run from wild dogs and everything else, you understand? <laughs> but, but, but eventually, it, it catches up with you. Hello? And so the Bible says, if you sow to the flesh, then you shall of the flesh reap corruption, decay. It's going to affect your physical body. So be careful what you do with this temple. I mean, that's the bottom line, okay? And so we should be able to speak to each other. Listen, the atmosphere of the home should be filled with worship and praise. There should be melodies, amen, coming from our own hearts. We, we ought to hear each other periodically walk through the house singing a song, a, a, a Christian song, a worship song, a praise song or something. Hello? I just wonder how many Christian homes have that. Or is it all this other noise? Cuss, excuse me. Did I say cussing? But not Christian. <laughs> Fussing, hollering, and screaming. Not Christians. Hello? Yeah. We, we hear all this other noise. But we, do we hear the kind of noise that's going to be soothing to the spirit? That's going to be inviting and encouraging everybody in that house to want to spend time with Christ, want to spend time with God, want to spend time communing with the Holy Spirit. And most Christian homes don't do that. And look, but I'm filled with the Holy Ghost that will fall. <laughs> you got to be a little bit older to understand. <laughs> All right. Again, everything else that follows this verse is like yeah. turn back into things that with the Holy Spirit, right? Then it goes on to say in verse 20, giving thanks always, giving thanks how often? Always, always for, all, for all things. Now, again, ain't nobody in here crazy. Nobody's, you know, masochistic uh, at all. But, but, but the giving of thanks is in view of two things. Number one, inviting God's divine power into your situation to change it. 
That's number one. Number two is your expectation of coming out of this thing because of divine intervention. Mm -hmm. So we can give God thanks even for the craziest stuff that happens in our lives. Because it's with a view toward God being involved and God eventually bringing me through this stuff. Yes. Ain't nobody happy about being in the middle of it. I mean, unless you like that. I don't like that kind of stuff. Right? But it's always with a view. This giving of thanks is always with a view toward divine intervention and eventually coming out because of divine intervention. Okay? If you feel with the Holy Spirit, you won't have a problem giving thanks for all things, always. That's, right. That's what the book said. I didn't say it. And so I can't come along and change this. It says always. Is that what your Bible says? Mm -hmm. And for all things. All right. So we want to be able to do that. And we can through the power of the Spirit operating in our lives. Giving thanks always for all things to God. The giving of thanks is to God, not for the stupid stuff that's going on in our life. But again, even in that, we talked earlier about discovering the, the will of God through circumstances. Sometimes life is the best teacher to help us get to whatever it is God is trying to help us to understand. Mm -hmm. It don't feel good, mm -hmm. but we weren't listening the other way. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You, you know, mama, you say hard head make her. Uh, amen. Praise the Lord. You don't cuss it in the house. Here. All right. <laughs> okay. Um, in the name of, 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 the, of our Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 21 says, submitting to one another in, in the fear of God or fear of the Lord. Uh, again, uh, this submission is, um, is a willful uh, submission. Uh, to each other. It is a, a reasonable subjection to one another. Uh, <clears throat> uh, this word is a military term, which means to line up under, line up under, the under is whatever is the authority over you. And it also means to line up in battle array. Okay, line up in battle array. So, so this submission here is a willful subjecting of ourselves to one another. Again, the illustration that I like to use is when I'm when I was pastor, I would de I delegated people to be leaders over different ministries, and I would go and sit in on the meetings of those ministries. I would come in, sit in the back, shut my mouth, and don't say nothing unless they call on. Okay. Um, because in, at that time, those people who had been delegated that responsibility, they were in charge of that meeting. I didn't have a right to come in there and just take over the meeting. So in that sense, I submit to them. It doesn't make me not be pastor anymore. It's just me acknowledging that they have been delegated these responsibilities and they're handling their responsibility. If they call on me, then I'll ask or answer as best as I can. Okay, so, so that's the kind of submission that it's talking about right here. Um, many, many pastors are caving in to the pressure that this verse uh, has to do with husbands submitting to wives and wives submitting to husbands. Let's take turns. I'm going to show you why that's not true. <laughs> it's not my opinion. I'm going to show you why it's not true right here in this book. Okay? But pastors are caving in to the pressure. But either we believe this stuff, if you understand it, you don't have to vacillate back and forth. You stand on this thing because you understand what it's saying. Right? So I can't make this Bible legitimately. I can't make this Bible say what I want it to say. I can make it say what I want it to say, but not legitimately. And if, if the, the average person is not aware of what the accuracy of the interpretation is, then how are they going to know? Whatever somebody says is right or wrong. How they going to? And that's why I pushed and pushed and pushed for years. I want you to read this Bible. I want you to understand it. If I make a, a, a wrong statement, I want you to grab me by the collar. Pal, you messed up. No, thank you very much for showing it to me. I want you to do that. But you'll never get there if you don't understand this book. 
your life depends upon whether or not what I'm giving you is accurate information or whoever you're listening to. Your life depends on it. Because if you believe it and it's wrong, guess who's in trouble? You, right? So, so part of what I try to do is while I'm teaching, I try to help you to understand how to rightly divide the word. That's what I do. I take it apart piece by piece by piece by piece, analyze it. If we take it a piece, then we look at every piece, and then we put it back together again so we don't mess it up. Amen. All right. So that's that's what I do. So if you stay around me long enough, you're going to pick up some points <laughs> on how to do this stuff. Okay. All right. Submitting yourselves one to another. So this submission, again, is the opposite of independent spirit. It's the, it's the opposite of an independent spirit in the church. And, and, and there's a bunch of independent spirits running around the church house. A bunch of them. They, they don't know that they're supposed to willfully submit to each other so that we can get along so that we can accomplish the will of God. That's what this is all about. But if everything is about you and nobody else, we ain't going to accomplish nothing. Right? So, so this is going to help you as you interact with other believers that you come across. And if folks is, if they need some little help in, in little correction, then take them over here and explain this stuff to them so that they can have a better understanding. So I really pray that those of you who are watching by Zoom and those of you who are present, that you don't just get this information and tuck it away in your notebook and never say nothing to anybody about it. That's the worst thing you can do. Because now you're a thief. Ooh. Because you've been given some divine instructions and you're sitting on it. You're not giving it away to anybody else. You're a thief. Okay? We are required to give this stuff away. And the more we give it away, the more God gives to us. You got that? All right. So this submission here has nothing to do with the husband submitting to the wife. But let's take turns. I know every wife wants to take turns. In fact, some wives want all the turns. I didn't say that. Praise the Lord. Verse 22 says, and you can actually put, but you wives, you can put that in front of the word wives. It is a clear distinction between the submission in verse 21 and verse 22. Clear. I'm going to show you in just a second. You don't have to take my word. I'm going to show you. Okay. All right. So the same idea is in both places. Submission, that is a willful submission or willful subjection of myself to another. It's, it's, it's. I make up my mind, this is what I'm going to do. It has nothing whatsoever to do with how you feel or what you think or what you want. Did y'all hear that? Did everybody hear that at home? Somebody raise your hand. Okay. Yeah. See, this part is one of the toughest things for women in the church, period. It's probably the number one toughest issue is, <laughs> should I submit to my husband? Why should I submit to my husband? He ain't acting right, so why should I submit? Your, listen, the husband didn't wake up one day and said, hmm, I got a great idea. I'm going to make my wife submit to me. And I'm going to put it in the Bible. Now, you know that's not how it came. It came by divine revelation. And God must have had a reason for doing it. It may not be comfortable, but by the time we get through talking about the man's responsibility, all you got to do is that. I can handle that. And we're going to go through this chapter to, to get to that point. Yeah. The wise thing is the end of the world because I got to submit to this knucklehead dude. <laughs> he ain't treating me right. He ain't this. He ain't that. And boy, y'all y'all are professionals that put me from the down. <laughs> <laughs> but it does it says plain as day wives it didn't leave no room for nothing else right wives what yeah, yeah see y'all need to say that with gusto <laughs> I'm on my way to the men but right now we're talking about the wives Okay, the Bible gives equal time, and we'll see that in this chapter. But right now, I need y'all to shout it out for me. Why do it? 
Why do what? Well, there we go. There we go. I didn't get none of y'all at home. Say nothing. All right. Praise the Lord. Okay. Wives submit. That is line up under your husband. It's a military term. Get in line. Right? Battle array. Okay. There's a strategy as a husband and wife ought to operate together to do kingdom business, knowing that you're going to be opposed by the enemy. And so we have to line up in battle array in order to confront the enemy. Okay? It's a willful submission, subject, subjecting yourself to your husband, willfully. Now, dude can't make you submit, and I know some wives are pretty glad about that. They tell me what to do. <laughs> Yes, ma'am. Even if the wife is the head of the household. Even if the wife is the head of the household. Well, if the wife is the head of the household, there ain't nobody to <laughs> except for Christ. No, you still have still to submit there. to Christ. Huh? He's still there. Well, you ain't the head of the house. Mm -hmm. He may not be living up to his responsibilities, but the wife is never the head of the house. Mm -hmm. Did you hear what I just said? Mm -hmm. Woo! I know some people don't need to class before so. I'm out of here. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the wife is never the head of the house if, if the husband is there. He's never, she's never the head. God made her to do what to her husband? And, and help back me. in Genesis. I help me. In Genesis chapter 2. I help me. Ch chapter 1. Help me. Sorry, chapter 1. What? A help uh, helper who is suitable for him, one who is able to adapt to him, one who fits him like a glove, hand in glove, okay? So God made the woman to be able to adapt to that dude. Watch it, I had to change. Yay, yeah, yeah. change. I wonder why does it say submit to your own? Your own, because it's your own, everybody got one. Excuse me, everybody's supposed to have one. <laughs> So your own your own private possession. That's the, that's the sense of this word. Your own. Uh, let me, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm talking. Answering your question. Yeah. It's your own private possession. Your possession is your husband. Okay. And so you only have to submit to one dude. It didn't say submit to every man in the world. That's what it does not say. Okay. So if somebody outside the house is disrespecting you, don't put on your boxing glove. You should be able to go home and get your husband. Let him put on his. Okay. But you just have one. Lord have mercy. Y'all just think about that. Why all you wives think about that? I just got to submit to one dude. And that's the hardest thing in the world. One dude. How many personalities do wives have? See, see we got to look at this thing from a balanced perspective. How many personalities do wives have? Right? And so, like, like I forgot who it was that wrote the book, said men, men are like waffles and women are like spaghetti. Right? And their brain is all over the place. And men, and men are compartmentalized. That's why they can talk to you or you can talk to them and they can be looking at the game. Uh huh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and they can't tell you what you just got through saying, right? right? Mm -hmm. but, but so men are more compartmentalized, and 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 men are referred to as more more logical than women. You know, women are more reasonable than men, uh, and so forth. So you got these things going back and forth, and how much of that is really founded on truth? Okay, what we do know is, without a doubt, God gives instructions for the role and the responsibility of both the husband and the wife. He just happened to start out with the wife in this case. <laughs> All right. So y'all just go fast as you see, but we ain't finished. Lord, have mercy. Yes, ma'am. I was thinking when it says here, like she said, submit to your own husband mm -hmm. as to the Lord. I was thinking more on the term that um, in those days, uh, they were, the wives were shared even by visitors that came. They did what? They were shared. The wives. The wives oh, were shared visitors. even by with even visitors. by visitor or the people there. You know how they had a, a church with a lot of orgies and stuff like that. So I'm thinking this is telling us to submit. I mean, on, at this point for these people was to submit to your own husband. That was your one husband to give yourself to. 
um, that's, that's not the connotation here. Okay. This, the sexual part is not not part of this. Mm -hmm. It literally the submission is every part of your life. Okay. Okay. Um, and we'll see why when we get to it. But if another man comes and try to give you instructions or tell you to do something, whatever, you need to you, do it. Right. I think you're you're submitted to your husband, yeah, your own yeah. husband, yeah. not to that other man. Right. Now, if you're on your job and your boss tells you to do something, you'll have to willfully yeah, subject yourself. Yeah. Right. So that's different. But any man coming around trying to tell you to do something. And then I, I, I'll go all the way back to Genesis chapter three. Uh, when he wind up having a conversation with the devil. Mm -hmm. And I'm saying, what's she doing talking to that dude? Mm -hmm. She should have told him to talk to her husband. Mm -hmm. But she was out there shopping all by herself and the husband wasn't around. So she felt like she needed, you know, this, that, and the other. And so she didn't bother to go <laughs> get a husband. And that's what got everything in trouble. Yeah, that's funny. Because she had the wrong conversation <laughs> with the wrong dude. Mm -hmm. Uh, I get into all of this in my marriage counseling. Ooh, that's wonderful. But anyhow, <laughs> so wives, you wives, all wives, it doesn't even matter if you're saved or not. If you are a wife, you are responsible for this role and this responsibility. Because marriage is God's idea. It's not man's idea. So it doesn't matter if you're saved or not, you still will be held accountable. Mm -hmm. All right? Mm -hmm. Submit to your own husband. One dude. Why is it so difficult? That's a lot. Because I don't like him. <laughs> well, and pride. Huh? Pride is an issue, too. Pride won't let you do this. You can't operate in pride and be filled with the Holy Spirit at the same time. You got to give way to one or the other. Because the Holy Spirit knows how dangerous pride is in the life of any believer. Yeah, he knows. So, so it, it leaves no room for me to add anything in. Uh, submit if, 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 if. It don't say that. It says, why do what? Is there anything in between them two words? No. You sure about that? A comma. Well, a comma. <laughs> you got to take a breath before you can say something. Why? Samantha. <laughs> take a breath. <laughs> You're going to need it. That's a hard word. It's a hard word for Christian women. And why should it be so difficult? There's another passage over in Peter. Oh my God! I, I, I put these two together because so it's just it just it 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 addresses the issue. Okay. So anyhow, let's stay right here. <laughs> Wives submit to your own husbands. How? As to the Lord. So your submission is more to who than to who? To the Lord. More, more to who than to who? Lord. It's more to the Lord than it is to the husband. The husband just happens to be the beneficiary. Because the Lord is the one who's given the instructions of what the role and responsibility of the wife is supposed to be. I think that makes it easier. It, 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 it. When, when we get through with the rest of this, that's what, what wives ought to be saying. It's all I got to do. I can do that. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> that's right that's right so 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 when we read the word and it gives in this passage it gives specific instructions to the wife specific instructions to the husband who's responsible for what Submission. who's responsible for what those instructions who's responsible for what okay i hear what i just got to say the bible this chapter gives specific instructions to the wife and to the husband. Mm -hmm. So who's responsible for what? Who is responsible to submit? The wife is responsible to submit. Okay. And that's as far as we've gotten. <laughs> I know, but I'm asking a general question because we're going to unpack it here in a second. We're responsible to obey. Husbands are responsible to do what they're responsible to do 
given to them by, by this word, and wives are responsible to do what they're supposed to do, given to them by this word. Everybody's responsible. Nobody gets a pass. Nobody gets a way out. And that's, that's, that's part of the problem, is people always look to the way out. I mean, divorce should not be part of the vocabulary of a Christian couple. It shouldn't even be part of the conversation. It shouldn't be part of the thinking. Why? Because Malachi chapter 2 says God hates it. And if he hates it, how can I be okay with it? And so you can see how when the Bible says something and I say, yeah, the Bible says it, but I'm going to do what I want to do. That's rebellion. And don't get mad at God if you get a spanking. God make the wood chair. <laughs> he sure taught men how to make the wood chair. That's right. Yeah. But anyhow, okay. So, so to your own husband, as to the Lord, it's just as you would submit to the Lord. Wives, submit to your husbands, just as, or even as you would submit to Christ. So, move that dude out the way. I'm submitting to Christ. But your husband is supposed to be the beneficiary of your submission to Christ because you are treating Christ as your husband. Mm -hmm. I'm just talking to the wives right now. It's not going to be one sided. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, Christian marriages, the divorce rate is just as high. That's exactly right. Because nobody's doing this. Yeah. The Bible says A, B, C, and D, but I don't care. I'm doing what I think. I'm doing what I feel. I'm doing what I want to do. All up in the church. So the wife submitting to her husband is as to the Lord. You, you, you as a wife should not treat your husband any different than you would treat the Lord. Ooh. Ooh. Let me squirm for you. <laughs> Little girls are not taught this stuff growing up. They're not shown this by most mothers as they grow up in those homes. What they see is a mother who, for the most part, is in control, running the family, because the man is irresponsible, not there, whatever, whatever, whatever. Or the man doesn't understand what his role is, so he thinks, I just go to work, bring the check home, and then I can do whatever I want to do. And so those little girls who grow up don't understand this stuff. And that's why when they get grown and they get married, and then somebody say something about submit to this dude, that ain't gonna happen. I'm telling you, I've, I've been counseling for about 47 years now. I know, I, I didn't hurt at all, okay? And so uh, Christian wives, if they don't get a hold of this, how in the world can God bless their marriage? Tell me. If I'm going to do it my way, then how can I expect God to bless my marriage and make it what it's supposed to be? Talk to the wives right now. Mm -hmm. What if you were the only one with a Bible in the house? And in most cases, the wives are more spiritually minded than the husband. But yet, wives want their husbands to act like perfect Christians. When half of them ain't Christians, they just said they were. <laughs> Hello, I done talk to them. <laughs> I'm trying to help these wives. Don't be gullible. If that dude ain't got no fruit on the tree now that y'all married, that is, I'm sorry, but but you can't expect Christian behavior out of a non-Christian man. Right. Hello. Mm -hmm. So you can minimize your frustration by just backing up off that dude. And there's the scripture that tells how to win that dude. Hello. But we don't read the Bible, so we don't know. So as to the Lord, submission to your husband should be the same as if you were submitting or practicing submitting to the Lord. That's amazing. Listen, and it gives you a reason why. What's the next verse says what? For. That word for introduces the basis, the reason for submission. It gives you the reason. It doesn't just, just 
slap a law on, upside of your head and make you, you know, obey it. It gives reasons why. And there's another chapter in, in another book that gives you all kind of reasons why submission is important. But we don't read the Bible. We get stuck on our favorite few verses that we always love and always go to and only to three that we can quote out the whole Bible. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. For the husband is, why should a wife submit to her husband? Why? Because the husband is what? Head. Head of the wife. The wife is not the head. It's only one head. <laughs> Y'all got that? Not a double head. No, not two heads. No, no. No, that's a monster. Okay. <laughs> and that's why marriage is as tore up as they are, because it's two heads right there. The husband is the head. Did the word stutter? <laughs> huh? I'm talking to the wives right now, that's all. But the husbands, y'all, we next. I'm in here too. Okay. Why? Listen, for the husband is, not maybe, not if he acts right, not if he treats you right all the time, let you have your way all the time. It don't say none of that in here, right? It says the husband is. What? Head. Head of the wife. See, some wives will say, well, he may be the head of this household, but he ain't my head. Oh, did that say that in here? What does it say in your Bible? See, see the reason why I'm pressing this is because we just run past all this stuff. I know people read Ephesians chapter five. You've heard teachings and preachings and all that stuff out of this chapter. But if we don't stop and consider what this verse, what these verses are saying, we're going to miss it again. The husband is the head. That's not the husband's idea. That's God's idea. So when a wife fails to submit, don't want to submit for all of her reasons why, she's still in rebellion against God. She's disobedient to God. Ah! I'm just talking to the wives right now. The husband's is on the way. But wives have to get this. Christian wives have to get this and, and eliminate all of these excuses for not submitting to your one husband mate. Now, that don't mean you lay down like a rug and get walked on. It don't mean that you sit around and you take abuse verbally or physically. That's not what this is talking about. Okay, this is talking about people who are filled with the Holy Spirit. They're not folks who act stupid, all right? And people who go to church, some of them act stupid. All right? <clears throat> Listen, he's the head of the wife, as also Christ is what? The head of the church. Same comparison. So, so Christ is the head of the church. The husband is the head of the wife. Now, let's go back real quick to verse 21. What would it look like for the church to be telling Jesus what to do? <laughs> well, Jesus, we're supposed to take turns because everybody's supposed to submit to one another. Ooh. Hello? Jesus is the head. There's no time at which he is not the head. The husband at no time is he not the head. Even if he ain't acting right, he's still the head. He's just a bad acting head. Now, there are ways to, to, to get him from there to what you really want and need. But if everybody digs in and, 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 and digs their heels in and they're not budging, guess what? Ain't nothing going to change. And you're just going to be in a house full of misery and everything else. All right. Christ is the, the husband is the head of the wife, as also or even as Christ is the head of the church. So, say, it's the same relational uh, 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 truth here. OK. And he capital he that's talking about Christ is the what? 
the savior of the body. So, so, so the husband is the head, but the husband is not the savior. Uh oh. Because there's some wives who get married expecting the husband to meet all of their needs, to take care of everything about them. And I'll just call it needy. <laughs> the husband is not the savior of the body. Christ mm -hmm. is. So there are some things that only Christ can do for the wife. Hello. Husband's not going to be able to do everything that you think he's supposed to be able to do. There's some men who are still boys. They haven't grown up yet. So my job is to help them grow up and assume their responsibilities so that the home can be a home that produces godly offspring. That's what God wants. Malachi chapter 2. Every Christian home should be producing godly offspring. Did you hear what I just got through saying? And how many homes, Christian homes, don't? As soon as kids that grew up in Christian homes get old enough, they stop coming to church. As if the church was their problem. That's because something was not consistent in the household. You can blame it on the church all day long, but I'm telling you, something was not consistent in the household. Because if that environment was back in verse 19, songs and hymns and spiritual song, they can melody in your heart. Trust me, these kids would want to follow Christ. But if they hear all this other noise, they saying it ain't working for you. How's it going to work for me? So let me pack my bags and go do what I want to do. We just don't want to face the truth. But that's the truth. And so we got captive audience with our kids at home. How many Christian parents have led their children to Christ? How many parents, Christian parents, have explained to their children what communion is about? Mm -hmm. What water baptism is about? How to pray? How to do basic stuff that Christians are supposed to do? How many Christian homes are doing it? Everybody's tired when they come home from work. Go, 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 go play. Go, go play. <laughs> and so kids now, they just own these things all day long. Because <laughs> parents don't have time for kids. They're too busy or are they too tired? One of the two. And those are lives that have been entrusted to you by God, and he expects you to be responsible with them kids. Because he wants godly offspring. That's what he wants. Parents don't know this, obviously, because they're not doing it. I used to say, and I'll say jokingly, but not jokingly, but jokingly. <laughs> If I could line up some Christian parents and whoop they, excuse me, yes, I would. <laughs> because there are so many things they've missed out on. And then the sad part is they're not even trying to come to a Bible study so they can learn this kind of stuff. Yes. Um, when you're talking about the man is the head, but he is not the savior. Mm -hmm. so I know a lot of wives. Um, you talk to them and they say everything about their husband, but you know nothing about them. It's almost like they're obsessed with that person. Can the husband be your idol? Uh, now, do you mean obsessed in a positive way or obsessed in a negative it's, way? They ain't got nothing good to say about it. It's just like, it's I understand what you're saying. It's a set of women who you don't hear nothing out of their mouth but their husband, how the husband will. Maybe talking about both. I'm not talking about both, okay. You don't know yeah. nothing about that woman, right? And you know that she lives and breathes because she obviously never discovered what her God given role and responsibility is. But is that her being submissive, or is she? She's, she and I don't mean no harm because I, I don't know who the person I mean, is. I know a lot of them. She's, she's, I'll say not knowing. I was gonna say ignorant, but that's not a bad <laughs> word, it just means not knowing. 
A lot of wives are ignorant, depending on where they grew up, what 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 country they grew up in, mm -hmm. South United States country, country, they got all kinds of stuff going on down there. And they, they move here and, and they bring that mentality with them. But can a husband be an idol? Yes, I think so. So you have to be careful from the submission to um, into that idol? If you're that type of woman. <laughs> yeah, and I hear you right. There, there are some women who are needy, and they, they, they are willing to do whatever they have to do in order to keep this man, even though this man is running around cheating and gambling and drinking and drugging and everything else he can get into. But this woman is so insecure because she don't know who she is that she'll just stay there and put up with a whole bunch of stuff, right? Yeah. Until they get done with. Right. So, uh, so in a sense, that's kind of an idolizing uh, of the husband. Uh, <clears throat> so so both of them. With somebody, you, would, you would tell them to be careful in that because they might feel like they're just. Well, you have to say everything I'm saying. You can't just pick a piece out and tell them that. You got to say everything I'm saying. You got to build up to it, lead up to it, and then let them understand that you know in you know what 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 God's assignment is. And so I don't start in, in, in Ephesians, I start in Genesis chapter one. Because that's where the stuff starts. And so if they don't know Genesis chapter one, they ain't gonna know none of this. So um, and if either of you know some wife that's struggling one way or the other and you get a hold of this chapter then you got something to go to them with and try to encourage them and help them and build them up, you know what I mean? Not to the point where they're rebellious, but where they are secure enough to sit down with their husband and say, listen, I've been doing this for all these years and I just found out that, you know, we should be doing something different because there's something for both of us to do. And according to the word of God, this is what we're supposed to do. Not my opinion, this is what the Bible says, yes. So, if I'm understanding you correctly, it sounds like they are esteeming their husband. No, some of them ain't worth nothing. It's just that. <laughs> I mean, come yeah. on, y'all got to know what I'm talking no, about. No, no, it's, it's kind of a, 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 a dominant, a dominant. That you, that you have no idea who they are because their identity is their husband. Yeah. You can tell when, um, if all you do is talk about him, but I know nothing about you, it seems right. a bit dangerous. Like, yeah. If he were to die or something, you'd lose your mind. Right. That's right. You don't have That's exactly your own right. your That's own right. worth. Your worth is through that man. And to me, it seems that could be idling versus a woman who mm -hmm. has a strong man who's happy and you know she says, "Oh, you know what happened to me? You did to me. I love my husband." That's different from right. this. Right. No, no, you're so right. What I was going to say was, yes, could that be an idol? So is that Woman is placing her husband above God, then yes, but the answer is yes. Because they never talk about God, they talk about this person to death. Yeah. Well, let, <laughs> let me let me let me let me add these two pieces in there. <clears throat> um, again, I've counseled lots and lots of people down through the years, and some wives, some Christian wives, uh, think that it's okay to not be submitted to their husband as long as they're submitted to Christ. You cannot do that. That's not biblical. So that's the total opposite of yeah. Verse right. twenty-two says that we haven't got there yet. We don't have. <laughs> 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 so, yeah. So so you can't do that. That's not biblical because it says right here the husband is the head. Just like Christ is the head, okay. And so, uh, if if the Lord is the one that set up this echelon, this this order, then then for a wife to feel like she don't have to be submitted to her husband because he ain't this, and I'm just gonna love God with all my heart, you can't do that because God is the one who set this up. So you got to go talk to Him and ask Him to correct this, to realign that, and put you on top. Mm -hmm. Until He does that, you can't do that. Mm -hmm. God is the one, going back to Genesis chapter 3, God is the one who subjected the wife under the husband. God did that. Now, if we go back like I do, start in Genesis. 
technically, the wife's identity is supposed to be in her husband. Really? But <laughs> it's understanding that that husband understands what his role and responsibility is to her. It's supposed to work. This thing is supposed to work. If we figure out what God had in mind about marriage, it'll work all day long. But two people have to be in agreement 100% to do their part. Mm -hmm. Now, what I thought you was going to say was uh, some wives are quick to always say what their husband ain't doing. No. But they don't say what they ain't doing. No. no. Okay, it's that's what I thought general, you were going to say. So since you didn't say it, not yeah. even like being proud of him or nothing. Right, no. Just, I got you. be talking about, I, I ate some chili today. Uh, my husband ate chili yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> I hear you. And the issue is she doesn't know who she is. Right. She has no identity. So she is identity. she is insecure. She's needy. She's dependent. Right. And like you say, if something happens to that husband, she's gonna be in trouble. Well, and that's sometimes okay. and sometimes wives don't have a job because the mm -hmm. husband is part of his control mechanism, right. is to not let her work. Right. You know, so he can control everything she does and all that. And so she's caught up in that mess and she don't know it. Um, so whatever you can do to help her bring balance in her life, help. Yeah. But just you can't pull out a little piece and give it to her. You got to give her the piece says. Okay. All right. so, whatever you say, honey, you get ready to spend it. You know, she always, he didn't understand what his role was. No, he, did, he grew up in a home where the mother was running the show. That's what that means. That's what so that then means. You can't be submissive to that because you were in the end because you always can whatever you say. So, okay. Um, I, I will, I, you know, I'm not going to prove of, like I say, the woman taking charge, but there are some instances where the husband is just about as irresponsible as he can be. Mm -hmm. And if somebody don't stand up and do something, the whole house is going to fall apart. Mm -hmm. So, you know, at that point, you do what you can to rescue the house, to keep the house and the family, you know, as together as you can, um, you know, uh, because there are some guys that just, they don't get it. They don't get it. Yeah. So there's, there's, yes. a, there's a comment that says, you touched on a sensitive topic today and trust. You're a perfect example. Of what? <laughs> After what? I won't say a perfect example. Because he just asked my wife, she'd probably say maybe <laughs> not an A plus, but something less than an A plus. <laughs> <laughs> but then ask me, ask me, see, ask me, see how humble I was. Now ask me about my wife. Ask me about my wife. Is she an A plus? Yes. Yeah. She's something a yeah. little, little bit lower than A plus. Yeah, see, I'm know. see, we round, we a little lower than A plus. Because ain't nobody perfect. No, no marriage is perfect. No. No. Right, so there are struggles that come in from time to time. There are things that couples have to work through from time to time, you know. But we've been together for seven years, so we've been wow. swinging and duck. <laughs> 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 but all of us are. <laughs> all of us are. Yeah. See, so what? What I would like to hear, because you normally hear men get up and say. I thank God for my wife, and you know she put up with me all these years and stuff like that. You always hear men say that, right? You don't never hear women say that. <laughs> you know, I, I, I don't hear women say that. They don't go up to the podium and say, "You know what? I thank God for my husband because he's been putting up with me all." I don't never hear that. It's always the man when the man says the man says, but I never hear the women say it. Have y'all said it? I didn't think so. Praise the Lord. Okay, this proves my point. Okay. So again, this is equal time. Everybody is messed up. Everybody's trying to figure out how to do it God's way. Everybody. So everybody has to admit there's some defects in me. There's some shortcomings in me. There's some blind spots in me. Everybody has to say that. Not just pointing the finger at somebody else all the time. Hello? All right. Okay. Woo! <laughs> yes, I will be touching on some sensitive subjects tonight. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Y'all better be glad when we got a few minutes left. Woo! All right. Okay, here we go. <clears throat> All right. Okay, so the, the, the uh, Christ is the head of the church, and he is the savior of the body, not the husband. So the husband can do some things, but Christ can do other things. All right, and so we have to keep those two in perspective. We don't idolize the husband, but we before we get out of this chapter, we're gonna find out exactly what that wife is doing with that husband. 
is, is plain as day right here. Okay. And there are other passages that say pretty much the same thing. Okay. All right. Verse 24. Therefore, since Christ, the husband is the head of the wife and Christ is the head of the, of the, of the church and he is the savior of the body. Therefore, just as the church, just as, even as, it, it, it just like, y'all getting this? Just as the church is, is what? Okay. Subject to Christ. To the same degree, the church is subject to Christ. So what's the rest of it say? Don't stop right there. Don't say it there. Don't say that. That's too much at one time. <laughs> Just as, even as the church is subject to Christ, so the wives ought to be subject to their own husbands. The same way the church is submitted to Christ and expected to obey Christ. Ooh, let me leave that one along right there. <laughs> the same way the church is submitted to Christ, the wife is to be submitted to her husband. I didn't say that. You have a copy right in your hand. This is the word of God. The reason why it's so hard right now is because you didn't grow up learning this stuff. Mm -hmm. and so this is like shock value now. I got I, to do what? You, you don't know the dude I'm you don't know the dude I'm living with, right? What? Yeah. It's just how they do it. Like everything you know it's just like I think you read the riches to every, I know you're supposed to, but some things are just stupid. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. See, I was trying to break this up because I knew it was going to be too much at one time. <laughs> see, see, wives, get this now. What, what does it say to the wife? Somebody read it for me out loud. Somebody, anybody. So let the wives be to their own husband. Stop right there. Stop right there. Okay. Let's, let's, that's the basic. What's the first one? And therefore, yes. Therefore, just as the church is subject to Christ, uh -huh. so let the wives be to their own husband. Stop right there. Stop right there. All right. So, um, <clears throat> confession is good for the soul. I wonder if I can get some volunteer wives <laughs> to say. This verse. Just as the church. <laughs> Just as the church is submitted to Christ, so I am submitted to my husband. I ain't got no problem. <laughs> See, this, this is what the Bible does. It's supposed to confront everything that's in us that's not aligned with God's will and purpose for our life. It's supposed to make us feel uncomfortable. If we don't feel uncomfortable, we probably won't ever change. Yes. I just wanted to say one, one thing I see, like in reading, okay, I'm sorry. Well, just like um, that's my problem. Oh, yeah. oh, you got that old time. Right? You've got the old time. <laughs> 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 just like um, the church is supposed to be subject to Christ, so the wife should be subject to her husband. Yes. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
That's right. They tell us. Okay. But when we're disobedient mm. to the word of God, when people are married, you have people marrying in uh, one week, two weeks, or uh, going through things. You know, I, I, I met a guy, and, you know, my friend introduced me to him in another state, and I was mm -hmm. happy. Mm -hmm. I've never been married, mm -hmm. and he courted me mm -hmm. with all kinds of things over the phone. Oh. And then he was supposed to be a bishop, he was this and that. Oh. And I knew better <laughs> after some things went on. But the way people are getting married, and they're not getting married by God's That's order, right. by his word. That's so right. when you read this stuff, right. this is for Christians who should know, or when they read the word of God, right. learn it, and they become disciplined in this stuff. Right. And it's not happening right. because people are unequally young. How are you going to tell uh, a man? That's not a believer. Now, how are you going to expect out of him what only God can give him? And that's what's happening here. That's right. Christians understand this or will come to the knowledge. We don't know everything. Right. But we learn this as we go. Mm -hmm. And that's what's happening. I've never been married, but I see it. I see a lot of people that have been married, and I see what the problems are. Right. I listen to a lot of people. Mm -hmm. I have married family okay. and friends, and I see what's going on. Right. So it's making me want to wait. Oh no, but really wait. But anyway, Ooh. they're unequally yoked. You know, yeah, yeah. people are not yoked. No, no. The unequal yoke is a is a major it's issue. Major. Uh, yeah. And and then uh my policy has been for over 40 years that I won't marry anybody unless they go to premarital counseling. Mm -hmm. Because I already know what's gonna happen if they don't. Yeah, yeah it is they don't know that. That's so right. they get married based upon assumptions. They're gonna act right. I love him, and he's gonna change. We look good to God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All that, stuff. all the wrong, money. all the wrong uh, stuff. So I deal with all that and my stuff, all that. Stuff. But anyway, so that's that's a good point. So I didn't get no women, but no wife volunteer. But yes, oh, okay. did you volunteer? <laughs> I didn't. Think so. <laughs> 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 But anyway, um, so this is written to believers, believers of husbands and wives, right? Christian husbands and wives. Yes. yes. So I just want to make a point. Okay. This is not written to people of the same sex marriages. No. Okay. Amen. Amen. And this is also not written to those who are living together right. and are married right. and are not married. Right. So just another little mm. insight into okay. the word. Now, that is very a good, good point. Very good. But what I do, if the couple is willing to make these adjustments, even though they might be living together, because they're still responsible to God. But if they're living together and they're willing to make these adjustments that I talk to them about, I will counsel them, even though they're not Christians. Um, I mean, even though they're living. Well, that's there. fine, but I'm yeah. just saying and this does right. not apply to right. those who are living because they're not married. Right, right, right. 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 This is for a husband and wife. And that's exactly right. right. That's right. Exactly right. Absolutely. So, um, so anyway, uh, um, I still didn't get no volunteers. So I guess I'm going to move on. Okay, let me move on. So, so not not only not only does it say, uh, you know. Uh, Wives submit to your own husbands, but it says in some things. Only when I only only only, only when I feel like everything. Only when I want to. Everything. Everything. Only when it agrees with me. Everything. Only when it's gonna benefit me. Everything. That first Michael edition. Is that the first Michael edition? Yeah. <laughs> like Second <Seth and> Daniel. What? <laughs> well, it says, it, it, tell me what it says, because I don't want to put words in your mouth. Somebody it's tell me what it says. In everything. Is that what it says? Mm -hmm. Be submitted to your husband in everything. Now, this does not include your husband telling you to commit some kind of sin. Mm -hmm. You don't have to obey if that's what the instructions are. Okay? And everything has to do with everything um, about the marriage. Mm -hmm. Everything about the marriage, the wife is to submit O-B-E-Y to her husband in everything. It's, it's, it's interesting that when we get to these different points, you know, you know, 
I can tell that it's, it's less people saying stuff. <laughs> maybe there's less people marrying. Oh, uh, maybe. <laughs> That's it. It's um, easy for it, single it, people to say it. Right. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, and and again, the time the best time to get prepared for marriage is before, not after. Right. So I welcome singles to get a hold of this information because one of these days you're gonna want to be married and you'll have some excellent notes, excellent notes that you can draw from and all of this stuff before you say I do. That old boy ain't ready to say I do. Look. I ain't ready. I, I don't, Lord, have mercy. But be submissive. Listen to your own husbands in everything. Everything about the marriage. Right? Now, I could run off a bunch of specifics of, of, of that wind up being issues with most couples. It's usually some of the same stuff that plagues every couple. And just a list of things. And, and so if somebody don't feel like doing something, it, it probably won't get done, right? But that's not what this says. It says in some things. Okay, I'm just checking. All right. Pastor, you know, another thing that is going to drive, if he is searching out God and doing his will, it won't be hard not to do everything because he's doing what he should be doing. And then it all falls in place, right? Does it say that here? <laughs> see, see that, this is what keeps happening. You know, I'm talking to the wives right now, but I'm going to talk to the husband. But, but the wives is always looking for a way out. <laughs> always. I mean, always. They're looking for that crap so that they don't have to do this. But that's why I said, is it anything in between wife and submit to your own husband? Is there anything in between? Them? No, it's wife, do what? That's it. And this is in everything. And the same way you submit to Christ, the way the church is submitted to Christ, is how the wife is supposed to be submitted to her husband. That's why in verse 21, there's no way in the world you can squeeze taking turns being submitted to one another. That's not what that's about. But I also agree and understand that when you're talking about a particular subject, whoever has the best idea for the best strategy, that's what we go with. Right. I don't have to have the best idea or the best strategy, right? So at that point, I submit to the best strategy or the best idea, right? It's gonna benefit both of us, so why am I tripping, right? That's the end game. Yeah. Yes. Well, let me give you this example. When Richard was alive, um, he would, he would say, where shall we go to eat? Mm -hmm. And I would say to him, what would you like to eat? What are you hungry for? And, uh, he would tell me. And he would a lot of times, well, what do you want to eat? Mm -hmm. and say, well, let's pick what you want. You know? <laughs> because then I know if he went to where he liked to eat, mm -hmm. he wouldn't complain about the meal. Okay. Because he got, he got <laughs> like, and and after a while, um, instead of insisting going to wherever he wanted to eat, mm -hmm. he would turn to me and say, Where would you like to eat? Mm -hmm. And then I could say, right. I want to go wherever. Yeah. And then he would totally agree to it. Mm -hmm. And we would go eat where I want to eat. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's that's courtesy right there. Yeah, yeah. That's, yeah, just, that's, that's courtesy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's that's respecting you guys respecting each other and, and courtesy, mm -hmm. making to at making a decision. You know, again, uh, this one comedian said, you know, that the, you know, husband, wife, where you want to go? I don't know where you want to go. I don't know where you want to go. And after about 30 minutes of arguing, they just go back. <laughs> <laughs> And the really the <laughs> okay, here we go. Here we go. <laughs> We're almost out of time. Obey your husband in everything. All right. So from verse 22 to 24, it's wives. Don't try to stick your husband in there any kind of way. <laughs> this is what God is going to hold you as a wife accountable for. Period. Don't add nothing to this and don't take nothing away. That's when you get into trouble. 
Okay, so just two verses. Now, what are the two words that, that have been assigned to you in from verse 22 to verse 24? What two words? Submit and submit and both of them start with an S. They mean the same thing, but two different words, huh? Subject. Submit and subject. That's the same idea. Line up under. Okay, line up under. Right? And so that's that's what it's talking about. It's the opposite of, of an independent spirit. And that's what we can't have in marriage. A bunch of independent folks running around, wanting everything their way. That's not going to work. Okay. All right. So just two, just basically one word in these three verses. One word. Why submit? That's it. That's all. Tell yourself, that's all I got to do. I just got, I just got to do one thing. I just got to submit. That's yeah, but I just gotta submit. <laughs> That's it. If 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 I have to if I have a mindset of submission, it doesn't matter what the everything is. Mm -hmm. I I know that if my husband asks me to commit a sin, that's not gonna happen. So in that regard, you don't have to submit at that point, and God will absolutely understand. But everything else that's got to do with marriage. It ain't got nothing to do with what you feel or what you think or what you want. You know, that takes a lot of humbling. That's what we're supposed to be doing as know. Christians. I know. <laughs> yeah, and verse 21, that's what the, the submission there is. It's a willful decision to submit or to humble ourselves, to be reasonable in it, not have to have everything your way. It's being reasonable. Yeah, so so that's all you got to do is one 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 word to one do. That's it. All right. Now, husbands, what time? We got time. Eight, 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 eight. Oh, sister said we got time. Say that quick. Oh, oh my goodness, four people. Woo, we got about three or four minutes, something like that. I don't know. But anyhow, yeah, I would just don't say till next episode. Woo, y'all gonna throw stuff at me. Mm, mm, mm. All right. So just, just one word the wife has to be concerned about. That's it. So wrap your heart and your mind around it because it's, if you're just doing it out of duty bound, you're not getting credit for it. Because that is that the way you serve Christ? Is out of duty bound? I got to do this. Why well, I got to do this? Hello? So, so you can't even bring an attitude along with the submission. That's that. That's what it says right here. Don't get mad at me. I'm the messenger. Yeah. So, so don't add nothing. Just one word. I just got to deal with one sense, please. I just got to deal with one word and one duty. That should not be the hardest thing in the world, but it is. Okay, now, now, the, now the next, the next, the first word of verse twenty-five says what? Woo! I told you the Bible believes in equal time. All right. Okay. So, so wives, you can relax for a minute, and then you can rejoice at all of the stuff that God is telling this man that he's responsible for. Y'all ready? Okay, now it looked like we're gonna go over, so I don't know if y'all want to stay online or whatever you want to do. Uh, we're gonna be here probably a few more minutes because these folks ain't gonna let me go home, not in the middle. Of this. <laughs> <laughs> here we go. All right, uh, and I didn't bring, I don't, I don't, I haven't brought my notes in weeks because we'd be here forever, so I can't do that. So we're just gonna go with such. So, right in verse 25 says, Husbands, talking to who? Husbands. Any future husband, all right? If you're single now and wanting to get married one of these days, this applies to you. And it's better to go into the marriage with the right biblical mindset than it is to get married and be stumbling and fumbling because you didn't find out ahead of time. Mm -hmm. All right? Okay. This is not just for you. If you're taking good notes, you should be able to communicate this information to whoever you know outside this room that could use this information. Hello. Mm -hmm. So the information we get is never just for me. It's always to give it away to somebody else who needs it. All right. Husbands, do what? Love. 
love your wife. It does not say, husbands, submit to your wife. <laughs> Let the Bible speak for itself. Don't add nothing, don't take nothing away. Husbands, love your wife. Why does it tell the husband to love his wife? Why do you think it says? He's a nuthead. Ah! Somebody say he's a nuthead or something like that. Huh? Something like that. What, what, why do you think? Why do you think it tells the husband to love his wife? Because that's not because he has to love her to understand her and to deal with the weaknesses that she may have that he perceives as a weakness. Okay. And that he has to. Then if he loves her, he will take care of her and understand and be patient with her. Mm -hmm. That's what. I, that's what. Okay. I see. All right. All that's good. Yes, ma'am. Those questions? Why did what? Why why does it tell a husband to love his wife? Because that's not what he was created. He has to be told to do so, right? Because he was created to be like a provider. A provider. So he has to be told, just like us women have to be told to be submissive, because that's not what's in our nature. Hmm. Okay. <clears throat> the reason why it says, and I agree with both of you, your comments, both of them were right on point. Uh, the reason why it tells the husband to love his wife because it's not normal and natural and instinctive for the man to do what? He has to be reminded. Mm -hmm. Literally commanded. Mm -hmm. Because God gave the man, the man was operating without the woman. We don't know for how long time, okay? When God uh, put him in the garden to till it and to keep it. We don't know how long he was there without the woman. <clears throat> so God gave Adam the man a job before he gave the man a wife. Mm -hmm. So wives, potential wives, if the old boy ain't got a job, <laughs> tell him I'll see you in 30 days or 30 years. Okay? Yeah, do not marry. I don't mm -hmm. care what kind of promises they make. If they don't have a job, some kind of way to bring income, how in the world are they going to take care of you? And so money is in the top three issues that tear up marriages. A shortage of money, okay, or mismanagement of money. Okay, so, so men, we as husbands have to be reminded to love our wives. Why? The second reason is because that's what they need. See, this ties us really going all the way back with what I do with Genesis chapter one. It ties back into there. That woman was taken from the man's side. Her identity comes from him. He's the one that named her. Hello. God gave her a name and Adam gave her a name. Her identity is supposed to be in him. But if he don't know who he is, if both of them are going to fall into a ditch because they don't know where they're going. Why are you speaking to this? To me? me? Yeah. <laughs> Poker face girl. I know, I know, I know. <laughs> Some people wear their Phoenix on their face. So <laughs> you can tell what's going on. Anyhow, so anyhow, just, you know, we're not pointing fingers at anybody no. in particular. But uh, but you know, it, it, this is supposed to bother. If, if 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 there is misalignment, it's supposed to bother because the pressure is to bring correction, to bring you back in alignment. That's the purpose of this. Okay. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so the husband has to be reminded to love his wife, and it's what the wife needs. Is what she needs, or else God wouldn't have told the husband to do that. He already knows he got to work, he got to make some money some kind of way. But he has to learn to include everything that he does, he has to include his wife in the picture. Mm -hmm. Everything. And men have to be reminded of that. All right? Husbands, love your wives. How? See, don't I'm skip sure. a word. Don't skip a word. How? Just, just as, as Christ, Christ also loves the church. Stop right there. 
So again, the wife is to submit to her husband as unto Christ, as if she's submitting to Christ. And it tells the husband the same thing. He's supposed to love his wife the same way Christ loves the church. But most men don't know this. They don't know what that would look like. How do you unpack that? Most men in the church don't know this. They heard it, but they don't know what to do about it. The same way Christ loved the church is the way husbands are supposed to be loving their wives. Hello? Same way. Same way. So if there's accountability, the wife gets to look and see if that husband is loving her like he's supposed to be loving Christ. And accountability on the other side is the husband get to look at that wife and see if she's submitting to him like she would Christ. Everybody is accountable. Hello? We don't get to point fingers at the other one all the time. Hello? So I recommend, as I have for years and years, wife, you learn as much as you can about what the Bible says about what your role and your responsibility is. Husbands, you learn as much as you can about what the Bible says about your role and your responsibility. Every Christian couple ought to become masters at what the Bible says about marriage. But that's not the case. So we got a lot of messed up Christian marriages, just like we have a lot of secular messed up marriages. Okay? All right. I ain't going to keep you all night because I can't, but I won't. All right. So I'm going to do this one little thing and we'll stop. Husbands, love your wife just as, even as, just like Christ loved the church. Now, what was the proof of his love? He gave himself, he gave himself up for her. Now, just like wives say, I'm not highly motivated to submit to my husband because he ain't treating me right. Now, what's the other side of that same coin? Do not your name, right? the, hu the husband is saying, why should I love my wife the way I'm supposed to love her if yeah. she's not submitted to me? Yeah. And I'm not saying either one of those are right, but that's the stalemate that happens in most marriages. That's, that's, right. that's what happens. That's right. But it's easy to point the finger at what the other one ain't doing. Right. But what about this one here? Mm -hmm. Right? And so I don't have a right to, to, to tell God to change my spouse if I'm if I'm not doing what I'm supposed to do. And so again, if I've got this understanding that I, I'm submitted to God, but I ain't submitted to this man, so you don't know who he is. Well, God is looking at you looking crazy, cross-eyed. Because he's the one who set this whole thing up. It's God, Christ, the husband, the wife, the children, the dog, the cat, the fish. That's the order. And so until God changes it, you and I don't have a right to come along and change it. And it's supposed to benefit everybody. That's the problem. If I'm doing everything I'm supposed to do towards you, you're going to have a smile on your face. If you're doing everything you're supposed to do toward me, I don't have a smile on my face. Everybody walk around with a smile on their face. That's what's supposed to happen. So when there's no smiles, somebody ain't doing what they're supposed to be doing. That's what that means. So you can point fingers, but I guarantee you something's going to be pointed right back at you. Okay? All right. Okay. All right. Gave himself for her. So this kind of love here, this is not agape. It's, it's agapao. is another word for love. It's about five, six different words for love in the, in the Greek. But, but this is the same love that uh, John 3.16 says. For God so loved the world. So the object of his love was the world. And so what did he do? Gave up his only begotten son. Okay. This is the love that's mentioned in 1 John chapter 4, where it says, perfect love cast out fear. There's no greater love than the love God has shown toward us. That, that, that's the kind of love this is referring to right here. Now, um, you can do your own study, and I know we've been taught this for years, that agape love is God's unconditional love. Would you see if you can find out where 
those two come together. Unconditional love. Who who started that? Who 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 started that? No, 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 no. See, no, see, see again. From understanding these words, mm -hmm. the definition, not what I think it means, mm -hmm. the definition of these words, uh, I, 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 maybe you found it. I haven't found where it mm -hmm. says uh, agape means unconditional. Mm -hmm. But the whole church is bought into the idea. Mm -hmm. Since when is love unconditional? Oh, oh. oh yeah. Oh, wow. When? If you look at the Bible, whenever whenever it talks about God's love, there's always a condition. <laughs> For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever so believes. That's right. And if, if, That's right. if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves, then I will. Everything is conditional. That's why I said it's man that came up with unconditional love. It's not. I, I agree with you 100%. And that's why I'm throwing the question out there is because the whole church has bought into this for years. Unconditional. God God's sins. love is conditional. God loves me. He understands yes. my sin. Yes. <laughs> it, it is conditional. Okay? He, he expects, cool. listen, he expects obedience. That's right here in these verses. Yeah. He expects the wife to obey her husband. And he expects the husband to obey him. Right. It's about obedience. It's not unconditional. It's conditional. It's unconditional. Yes. Then Jesus also said in the gospel, if you keep my commandments, if you shall abide. If you love me, you'll keep my commandments. Mm -hmm. That sounds conditional to me. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, just read through it. I mean, if you find somewhere where you can point out to me unconditional, I'll, I'll change my point. But God's love is conditional. It's all in the Bible, all over the Bible. Why do you think Israelites got punished so much? And God told them, I love you. You're my chosen people. I've called you by name. I've raised you from a little child, all this stuff, but I'm going to whoop your behind because you keep acting stupid. <laughs> so you check it out for yourself. You don't have to believe what I say. You know, when I thought that I got to him by unconditional, I thought it meant like, even though you're different from me, you believe different than me, you look different and first vice versa, whatever that, I still love you, I, have to, I respect you, mm -hmm. um, and I love you, but we're different because God made us all different. That's what I thought it meant. I get, mm -hmm. I get angry mm -hmm. at the things that you do, some of the things that you say. Mm -hmm. Vice versa, but I still love you as okay. a person. Right. That's what I thought. Right. That kind of that unconditional man of God unconditional man right. like that. See, see, God, God's love, and we talked about this, I think, in chapter two of Ephesians. Mm -hmm. um, that God, it, God's love is described as great, exceeding great uh, love. And so um, um wh why did God send his son to to die for us? is because God has, had, I'll just describe it like this. He has so much love before he created man, he didn't have a whole lot to do with it. He needed something to do with this love. He needed to give it to somebody, to right. bestow right. it on somebody. Right. So he cre <clears throat> created mankind, even though he knew mankind was going was to fail. And so mankind became the object of his love. Mm -hmm. So, so that's we we get all of this stuff because God needed to satisfy His own love desire. Mm -hmm. It's not nothing we did or will never do. He chose to do this before the foundation of the world. He chose to love us. That's what chapter one says. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm saying. If you don't get chapter one, then the rest of this may not make as much sense. But but He chose us before the foundation of the world, knowing full well we was going to mess up a whole mm -hmm. bunch of times. But we became the object of his love. And so he he had he he has to do something with all this love. He's given me. Got to do something with it. And, and maybe you love somebody a lot, but you restricted it because they weren't acting right, but you still had all this love that you wanted to give. 
I know some women who got pregnant because they had a whole lot of love and no boyfriend, so they just got pregnant so they can have a child, so they can have something to love. You didn't hear what I said. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm telling you, I, I know what's going on out there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because they had all this love and no boys, no boyfriends, no husbands. Mm -hmm. So I just, I'm going to just get pregnant and have me a baby because that way I can love them. Yeah. I can give away all this love I got bottled up inside. Me. That's serious right there. That's how powerful love is. It has to express itself. But people who just say, I love you, that don't mean a whole lot. Love, real love, Bible love, has to express itself some kind of way so that the object of your love never has to wonder whether or not you love it. The expressions should be so clear and so constant. Mm -hmm. I know this is probably the first time y'all heard it like this, praise the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 whatever I'm saying, I can back it up. Trust me. Okay, I don't just throw stuff out there and, and leave it. Okay. So anyhow, Jesus proved his love. He demonstrated his love for us by giving up his life. So this kind of love is self-sacrificing love, sacrificial love, not unconditional, but sacrificial. That means I'm willing to not get everything that I think I'm supposed to get if it's going to benefit you. And the other spouse's attitude should be the same thing. I, I'm willing to forego everything that I think I'm supposed to get if it's going to put a smile on your face. But we don't. We, we, if we don't think like that, then we're not going to be you're not the home. Not going to be happy home. There's so many passages. There's about 50 passages that I take folks through in marriage time. It's, it's serious because it's, it's so much in this Bible that God wants us to know about marriage stuff. Mm -hmm. And, and I'm, I'm just trying not to say a whole bunch of stuff tonight because it's all of the stuff is just piling up on me right now. But, but th this, this right here, and that's why I like to just stay right here in the context, deal with what this context is saying. Don't add nothing. Don't take nothing away. Let it speak for itself. Is it going to hurt a little bit? Yes, it will. Is it going to rub me the wrong way a little bit? Yes, it will. Because everything that's not properly aligned with God's word, it, the, the correction is to put pressure on us to get us back in alignment. So that's not going to be comfortable. And so our, our whole life is about trusting God, loving God, trusting God, and obeying God. Mm -hmm. That's what all of this is about. Mm -hmm. The whole Bible, that's what it's all about. Knowing him, loving mm -hmm. him, trusting mm -hmm. him, obeying him. Four things. Sum up this whole Bible in those four thoughts. The whole Bible, Old and New Testament. That's it. And so we make everything else complicated by not letting this book say what it says. Mm -hmm. See, and, and, and stop looking for loopholes. I ain't looking at nobody, praise the Lord. Just, just do what it says. Wives, submit to your husband, just like you would to the Lord. Husbands, love your wife, just like Christ loved the church. And demonstrate it. Mm -hmm. Demonstrate it. Love has to be demonstrated. It has to be, or it's not love, it's something else. Mm -hmm. And love, amen, when it's demonstrated, is not necessarily, not necessarily expecting something from the person that this love is bestowed upon. So, um, I choose to love you, period. That's my choice. And that's what marriage is supposed to be about. I, 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 I chose you because I loved you. I wanted to be married to you. That's why I was married and so forth and so on. That, 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 was, that, was, that was that part right there. 
and and it's important for the for the wife to have that same understanding toward the husband. See, so so marriage, from my perspective, is really more about my wife. And from marriage perspective, from the wife's perspective, it's more about me. Mm -hmm. But the problem is, mm -hmm. the wife wants what the wife wants, and the husband wants what the husband wants. That's backwards. That's not the way it's supposed to be set up. Mm -hmm. And I got stuff to show you. I mean, there's a bunch of stuff in this book to help you to understand those things. Okay, so we're going to stop right there and pick up next time. Thank you for those that were able to stay a little bit longer on the Zoom and those of you who stayed a little longer here. Uh, this is a very um, needful uh, uh, topic uh, to be dealt with, and it, it, it can take a long time because there's a bunch of illustrations that I'm sure you all can bring to the table, stories and people you know, situations and things, um, you know, but for the sake of what we're doing here, we're going to stay right here in this text and let this text open up and show us what our role is individually and what our responsibilities are individually. And again, all of it is to God. Our role and responsibility, we are accountable to God to do our part. So I need to learn what my part is. Spouses need to learn what their part is. If everybody's learning what their part is and do that, we got a better chance. And making something work, right? Okay. So thank you for your patience. Love you guys. Appreciate you being here. Don't forget to offering practice this little green basket over here. Investing in your future. And that's what we're doing as we unlock your identity in our study of Ephesians chapter five. It's Ephesians period. Chapter five. Great. Right? So, Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you right now, Lord, for such a strategic lesson, a strategic topic that we all need to hear about. Mm -hmm. Churches are made up of families, Lord. And when families are not built upon your word, then how can the church be what the church is supposed to be? How can the church accomplish what the church is supposed to accomplish when the families that make up that church are not in alignment with your word and your will? And so, Lord, we thank you for this tonight. Thank you for these that are here, those that are on the Zoom. Lord, that we're able to hear what it is that you want us to know. You are the teacher of this class, Holy Spirit. You open our eyes and cause us to behold things that we have not yet understood. But, Lord, it's important that we embrace this word, that we make it our business to practice this word, to do our part, Lord, because we are accountable to you. And you want marriages to be happy and blessed, oh God. Yes, Lord. We have complicated that. But Lord, we're asking you to help us to do what we individually are supposed to be doing to make the marriage what it's supposed to be. And that is to glorify you. And so we thank you for our time tonight. Lord, for those that it was a little tough, God, I just pray that you just put a little salve on there, Lord, to, to soothe the pain. But your objective, Lord, is to get all of us in alignment with your word so that, so that you can bless us beyond what we expect to be blessed, Lord. God, thank you tonight for our time with you. Bless us as we go from this place, but never from your presence. And bring us back together again at the appointed time. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Welcome, 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 welcome.